welcome to Busted Speakers, I'm Kush. And I'm Alex. And today we're reviewing Black and White Rainbows by Bush. Now Bush are the, one of those bands that didn't get the memo that grunge music kind of died out in the 90s. <laughs> and <laughs> they're, they're still making grunge music. Well, I wouldn't even call it, the, I don't know what this album was. Uh, they're making more music. more alternative rock, really. Yeah, I mean, alternative it's... rock. They, they, they lost their touch of like the aggression, the grunge. And I never mind, gr I never uh, like was opposed to Bush. I like some of their music. I was never like a big fan or anything, but their older stuff was decent grunge music. Definitely not Nirvana level, but it was good. Uh, yeah. I, this album wasn't even grunge. It was, uh, it was alternative rock. It was some Indietronica. There was some, it was weird. It was a really odd album. Yeah, it's a really weird listen for me. So Bush are a band that have like a weird legacy. Like, what, but okay, Nickelback, right? You look at them. No, not many people like them, but they do have a legacy of sorts. <laughs> Bush, I mean, they'll never be remembered as one of the best or even one of the worst. They're like the most ambivalent grunge band, one that people remember just because they were commercially successful, but. I mean, I don't mind them when I hear them, but I'd never listen to them by choice. They're kind of in that, like, Matchbox 20 type of, like, 90s rock band that... Who really listens to them now? But I guess people still kind of do. So, the thing that surprised me about this is that I actually thought this was kind of decent. I was fully expecting this to be Nickelback level, but... I'm not gonna lie, Kush, I mean... I really didn't mind this. I thought this was like reasonably good. Like, not even lying that some of these songs were pretty decent. However, there are one or two songs that uh, <laughs> did reach my expectations of a bad, bad band. But uh, I'm sure we'll get to those very soon. For me, this album was just was so half the tracks were decent, and the other half yeah. were bad. And I think this a good word to describe this album is underwhelming. Because right. when you hear the the grunge, when you hear Bush, you know it's a grunge album, a grunge band, who in their heyday made some aggressive, loud music. They've traded all that in for like this weird ambient uh, electronic influence. Like they have a full band, but they still use a drum machine on certain songs on here. Like what the hell? You have a you have a drummer, who's probably uh, a I don't decent. Even know. You have a decent drummer, and you still manage to use a drum machine. Like like that doesn't make any sense to me. But, uh, the, there's, they also have, like, it, it's gotten to the point, so, I call, I call it the Linkin Park effect after the most recent song, um, the Linkin Park effect is when you have a certain sound and you dish it for a completely pop-oriented song, which, right. in, in some of these songs, they just went full pop, like, not even rock-related. And I think that's what turned me off the most, because I was, I was expecting something, uh, more grungy more aggressive more like emotional a lot of, he sounded so disinterested in a lot of these songs like he didn't like care enough okay i care about talking about one of the worst songs i've heard this year i don't know what you think of this song kush but sky turns day glow oh my right? god oh my god <laughs> okay. there are a few positives here that i will get into the guitars are pretty well played like through the whole album so they're like good enough to you know carry the song and make it almost listenable anyway it started off with that sky 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 open which was bad enough in my mind because that's like warning us that this is a bad song but the whole message of this song doesn't make sense okay so it's called sky turns day glow day glow is a brand of paint pigment that comes in all types of colors that doesn't make sense that's like saying my hand turned into a color it's stupid. It doesn't make sense. You know, it sounds like a phoned-in sponsor for Dayglow. I mean, is that a brand? I don't... It's probably in reference to, like, the Black and White Rainbows album title because it's, like, a colourful album cover, but, like, if you mixed all the colours, it'd be a grey colour. But this... It doesn't make sense. Plus, it's, it sounds like they're being sponsored by something. So, uh, uh, it would be better if he said the sky turns pigmented anyway. Stupid lyrics, uh, stupid song. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I I hated that song. I said, at this point, they've just gone straight up pop rock. Like this is something Walk the Moon would have made. Uh, yeah, 
the lyrics were so bland and boring, and throughout this album, they have this stupid echo effect that just gets annoying at points. Um, they, like, the, the problem with this song was that when he sang, some lines felt like they had too many syllables, and he was trying to, like, squeeze it together by singing faster. And... That, yeah, that's, like, the only holdover from grunge, because grunge did do that, except it was, like, really aggressive and necessary. This just... Yeah, it, it doesn't work with whatever rock pop vibe they're trying to get. This was a bad song. This was probably one of the worst songs. I think the worst song was a closer for me. Uh, oh, People at War. Yeah. It was such a superficial closing song. Nothing happens, and he brings he brings this female vocalist in every couple oh, yeah. a couple <laughs> songs. She was so unnecessary because he would just overpower whatever she's saying and like. If you tried to listen, you'd hear it, but if you were, like, listening in the background, you could not tell there's a female vocalist, because he's just going over her. And this song seems like a solo effect, a solo effort at that point. It's not even, like, a band effort. He's just singing by himself with, like, the electronic beats, and I don't see how, where the rest of the band fits into the song at all. They don't fit in because there's nothing to fit in here. <laughs> so, this is, like, it sounds like Coldplay to me, and just how, like, dry-voiced, masculine... His voice was this is like their uh, 2014 album that was when they tried to make ambient pop <laughs> the one with us a sky full of stars yeah that was a great time for them uh okay so the addition of female vocalist almost worked for me because the whole album is basically the lead singer gavin rosdale dealing with his breakup from gwen stefani so line lines like Yes, another great divorce album. Ryan Adams has a new play pal now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so it, there are a few lines that have real emotions to me. Like, we hurt together, we hurt apart, which shows, you know, that they hurt when they're with each other, but they hurt when they're away from each other. That feels like a real lyric to me. However, he sings it really emotionlessly. Yeah, he sounds and... dead in the whole song, in the whole album. So I admit there are a few good lyrics on this album. The lyrics on Sky Turns of the Dayglow were abominable. Uh, I did not say that right. <laughs> <laughs> they were very bad. But on here they are just pretty decent at a few points. But it's it's the performance and conviction that kills this song. Yeah, I mean. So yeah, that pretty bad one. A lot of these songs are just really cheesy love songs with no with no substance to them. They're just like. I wish you could be here, and I love you, and this and that, and like, things that like, anyone could say and anyone could sing. There's nothing like, yeah. he never like, links the this, this song to himself. He seems, he seems so out of it. Uh, another bad song was Tomomi Corazon. Uh, what even was this? I, I don't know what that song was. No, I don't know about you, but I felt like the guitars were underwhelming throughout this entire album. I felt like- I thought they were okay. I thought, like they were okay. They yeah. were an okay aspect. They were never great, but they were at least okay I for thought, me. Like they were never bad or good. Yeah, because I felt like given that they were a grunge band, having those rock influences, at least the guitars and drums would be maybe not reminiscent. Maybe they've evolved, which is fine. Uh, they would be more prevalent and more interesting. But these were just like basic four chord songs for the most part. At least what I thought. And. I, I don't know, but that song Tell Me Corazon really exemplified it, because the guitars are just barely there. Like, you can hear them maybe if you tried. And another song with the dual vocals, which I don't mind. The girl's a fine vocalist. She just doesn't need to be there, because she you can barely hear her in the first place. And at this song, like the lyrics were just so bad, and he tries to do the Spanish lyrics, and it's just... <laughs> it's so bad. Uh, also, because they've got two vocalists, they take breaths more often, twice as much. And there's points where you can just, it's all the time, just <gasps> in the middle of this <laughs> song. So they probably should have worked something out, maybe get better air conditioning or something. Obviously, they probably didn't record this in a weird, abandoned Mexican factory or something with no air ventilation. But still, I mean, come on, man. Get some, uh, just take a few deep breaths before you make a song. I mean, there's no justification for this to sound as like tired and wasted away as it does and i know he tries to go for that vibe on some of these but to the point where it gets really annoying okay no. so no for the, for the good uh, songs there are plenty of plenty of bad songs but yeah we probably should go into some uh, okay songs 
I think the most bearable song for me was Lost in You. Uh, mm, I thought I that guess. I thought that it was just the most by the book rock song that they have, and they do have they add these string sections like violins or cellos or whatever. I, I'm not really too familiar with the instrument, but which is a nice addition to the song. Again, the lyrics are kind of generic love songs and bad, but. I feel like this is the one song where he has some sort of emotion in his voice, so it made more interesting for me because yeah. most of the songs he's just so bland. He's just unbelievably bland. There's also Peace Is, where I do not understand what he's trying to go for. It's not. Oh, <laughs> this is a decent song, but so he's making it sound like he's trying to do pieces, like pieces of something. But any maybe the terminology of the word peace, like world pieces and pieces lately. That's the only way this makes sense, because he's not being clever with this word, word, word play. Uh, as demonstrated throughout this album, the lyrics are pretty pretty hit and miss, mostly miss. My yeah. favourite on here was the song Water. Just I, because I like it sounds all. like a... Okay, um, I like this just because maybe I was aware of the breakup with Gwen Stefani and maybe made it more pertinent in my mind. Although, it does have a distinct 90s sound to it. The production was quite messy and cluttered, but not even 90s in the sense that Bush were a 90s grunge band. It's more like just really bad loudness wars thing, trying to fill up a song that should be really empty. Yeah, um, the, the song... I liked it just because it was a nice ballad, basically. I mean, and also, I, I, the instruments on this were pretty nice sounding to me, I'll admit. Uh, this is the song where I noticed they use a drum machine instead of a real drummer. Uh, right. Which, which kind of made me a little bit angry, but fine. Uh, the instruments, they, they have this build-up, but they don't build up to anything because they just they build up and then they just go right back down to what they started with. And then build up and start right back down what they started with. Um, I don't I don't mind the por- the rock more rock-oriented portion of the song, but the yeah. rest of it is more it's just really odd and doesn't really match very well because it's almost like a like a a synth pop song at that point. I don't know. It's really weird. Yeah. Um, Dystopia was okay, just yeah. because it was the only song on here that sounded anywhere close to the same realm of grunge that they did <laughs> in the nineties. Yeah, I just thought... it has like riffs and stuff like that. Now, grunge is a weird genre. Grunge is a genre that very few people can pull off properly. Uh, yeah. So the thing with grunge, you need an emotional voice. You need a type. Of, you need to be someone who can sing with passion. Now, Dystopia has all the instrumentation of it. I think the instrumentation is fantastic in that song. But his his vocals really do ruin it. Because he sounds so out of it. He just seems like he doesn't want to be there. He's doing it because he needs, he needs to feed his family at the, this, this point. Um, uh, but, yeah, I mean, he makes all the long... He makes all the other slow ballads, like, four or five minutes long, and this is, like, a two-and-a-half-minute song. And this is what I wanted yeah, more of. I mean, like, better ones. I think the instrumentation is really good. It's just that his vocals need some more energy, some more pizzazz to them. I just feel like it's missing something. The thing with this is, it does. You have to give it to them, though. It does sound like a band that have been around for, you know, going on twenty five years. Yeah, yeah. That's not a necessarily good thing. It sounds like a band that have, you know, gotten worse and worse over the last twenty five years. And, you know, Gavin Rosdale, he's not going to be remembered as a grudge legend in the same way Kurt Cobain, Eddie Vedder, Chris Cornell, even people like, uh, okay, not the lead vocalist of Creed, but even he's probably higher up the, there, <laughs> if you know what I mean. I mean, Creed's one of the most hated bands in history. I know, but he's still like a more enigmatic figure in the world of grunge, or I suppose more new metal there, but, I mean... He he's just he's a passable vocalist at best, but you know songs like Mad Love, the first song, which is the one that made me, you know, go like, ah, this is not too bad, you know, but still, it's basically stadium rock and a lot of this if you're lucky. And there are some songs here that are more electronic sounding, and I know Bush had like a weird electronic period, I think, in the late two thousands. Like the song Ray of Light, but I don't I don't know what they're they're trying to convey on here. I just do think this is Gavin Rosdale clumsily trying to 
get through his breakup with Gwen Stefani, basically. Except so... he doesn't know how to do it because he's a grunge guy. <laughs> you know, Kurt Cobain could have, in a theoretical world where Kurt Cobain broke up with Courtney Love in, I don't know, 2012, that could have spawned like a lovely acoustic, you know, breakup album or whatever. I don't know if they'd actually been together until 2012. That seems a bit far fetched, but, uh, you know, um, Kurt Cobain had the range where he could go from emotional ballad to really dirty raw songs. I don't know if Bush could. To be fair, I haven't heard their best albums, but from the sound of this, he sounds a bit out of his depth, in my opinion. So what would you rate it, Alex? Okay, there are some... I'm probably sounding like as down on it as you in general, but I do think there are some good cuts on here. But you have to trudge through the average and the boring and the bad to get to them. Plus, it has one of the worst songs I've heard this year in Sky Turns Day Glow. <laughs> so, probably three songs too long. Cut the three worst. Still wouldn't be that good, but, you know, More maybe passable. it would have gotten a six... Yeah, it would, maybe would have gotten a light 6 out of 10 from me, but as is, I'm going to give it 5.5, 5, which is very generous, but it is reflective of the fact that I didn't mind the fact that this wasn't grunge, I just minded the fact it wasn't emotional enough for a breakup album in my mind. Yeah, so I have a lot of the same criticism as you, but I think I took the fact that it, I don't mind that it wasn't grunge, I'm always looking for bands to evolve and change their sound, I think that's a good... It's a good indication of a yeah, band it's, moving. It's a good indication of a band actually having musical uh, creativity yeah. and stuff to play around with. Which I don't have a problem with that. Now, my problem here is that when he changes sound to this more slow ballad-esque songs on here, his voice stuck with that weird monotone grunge-esque voice. And even on the grunge yeah. songs on here, he has the same monotone. So he, he kind of like toned down his grunge voice, but didn't didn't put that emotional filter on it now that's my yeah. biggest problem is that he sounds lifeless in this album and he's made some really weird songs like i think every song in here could be improved if he happy if he put more emotion on it even though like the song like you said uh day that turns the sky glow or sky that turns the day glow um yeah, is a yeah. bad song <laughs> i think that if he had more emotion in his voice it would be even slightly better uh, I don't know, man. I mean, those <laughs> lyrics would pretty get to me no matter what. The sky turns into something that could be any color. That that either means it turns black as a combination of the colors, or it turns into a rainbow. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> there you go, black you and white rainbows. There you go. Yeah, no, he, he's not. He's trying to do something weird, but it do, it doesn't jive with us, obviously. Yeah, I, I think this is passable at best. It's. I, I don't I would never listen to it again minus maybe one song. Uh what's that song? <laughs> uh <laughs> Dystopia. Oh yeah, it was uh Yeah. Um, and even that's probably unlikely. Yeah. I mean I'm just hoping he can bring back the older sound, maybe put some more emotion in his voice, put some effort into these songs and the ice songwriting. I, I don't I don't ever want to hope that a band puts out a garbage album. Uh, I hope I want to. I want to listen to good music, but I don't know. Maybe maybe Bush just passed their heyday. I'm gonna give it a four point five out of ten. Well, so together we average to a five. So any Bush fans, we thought it was, Average. you know, that's a pass. That's a passing grade in, uh, you know, tests. So we thought it, we gave it a pass. There you uh, go. Well, maybe in UK and US five is a fail. <laughs> is it? Oh, harsh, <laughs> harsh. Harsh educational system there. Yeah. Uh, I, hopefully they can pull back together and rethink their albums, but I don't know. I think Bush has just kind of passed their heyday. Yeah. Well, that's it. Then. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in to Bus Speakers. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe. Um, check us out on social media and check out some of our other videos.